Hi everyone, welcome to GT Coding. In this video, we're going to create this live search using PHP and Fetch API. So before getting started, let me show you a demo of what we're going to build. Here we can see a list of all the names that we have. And if I go over here and if I type something, for example, if I type T, we can see that all the names with T in it gets displayed over here. And uh, we are not reloading our page or something, but uh, it is all happening in real time. So if I type SARA, we can see this name comes over here. And if we type something that is not there, then we don't see anything. So if you don't have anything in this input box, then all the names will be displayed. So let's get started by creating our database. If you don't have XAMPP or anything equivalent to that installed in your system, just go ahead and install that. And after that, you'll get access to this phpMyAdmin. So if you're using XAMPP, you have to go to localhost slash phpMyAdmin. And uh, we'll go over here and click on new. And here we'll name our database. So we'll name our database live search. And we'll click on create. Our database has been created now we'll create a table so we'll name it names and it will have two columns the first one will be id and uh, we'll go over here and uh, we'll click on auto increment and we'll also make it primary key and uh, here we will type name We'll change this to varchar 100 so that's it now save our table now we'll add some data to this column so we'll just do it uh, from our database itself i have already copied a sql query which i will paste it over here and um, just click on go and if we go to browse we can see all our data so we'll be working with this data in our uh, project so let's close this database i have created a folder called live search in my stdocs folder if you don't know about all this you can watch my introduction to php video where i have shown you how to create install xamp and uh, how to create your first project so in here i will just go ahead and uh, create a new file called index.php and uh, one more file called uh, style.css all right so in our index.php we will start writing our html live search and here we will type live search we we'll just uh, refresh our page so i'm going to localhost slash the name of the folder and if i click on refresh we can see our website over here now we'll create a form with an action of search.php which we are going to create and then we'll have the method as post and we'll have an input for uh, our search field and uh, we'll give it a name as name we'll give it a placeholder of search here and an id of search box so here we can see our search box now we'll create a ul for viewing our data so we'll create a ul with an id of data viewer and uh, here we'll create some allies name one name two and uh, name three so here we can see our names now that's basically it with our HTML. Now we'll go over here and create a new file and we'll call it db.php and here we're going to create a PHP class. So just type class and the name of the file and we'll create some properties. So private con private host local host private db name so the name of our database is live search private 
user the user is root in our case private password and the password is blank so we are creating these private variables because we don't need to access these variables from outside the class we'll be accessing it just from this class so now we we'll create a constructor so that uh, we can uh, execute this code whenever the class is instantiated so for creating a constructor in php you have to type public function underscore underscore construct and whatever you type over here will be executed when the class is instantiated or created so just for testing purposes what we'll do is uh, we'll echo something and uh, we'll go over here to index.php and we'll instantiate our class over here so here first of all we'll include our db.php file so we'll type require once and uh, then the name of our file and then here we'll instantiate our class db equals new db and if i refresh this page we can see hi is displayed so we know that our class is being instantiated so we'll go over here and write the code for connecting to the database so first of all we'll create a variable called dsn which is the data source name so we'll type mysql host this arrow host and semicolon db name equals this arrow db name so we are accessing these variables so if you are accessing these variables from the current class then we have to type this over here and this dsn will be different for all the different databases now we are using mysql so we have to type mysql host and db name now we'll write our code for connection inside a try catch block and uh, here we'll type this arrow con so this variable right here and uh, we'll set it equal to a new pdo and in that we'll pass the dsn the username and the password and we'll set a new attribute so we'll type set attribute and we'll set an attribute to enable our uh, pdo exceptions so we'll type pdo attr underscore err mode comma pdo colon colon err mode underscore exception so you have to type it exactly like this now if our connection is successful we'll just echo connection successful and uh, here we'll catch our exception so here we will type pdo exception and we'll create a variable and here we will echo connection failed and we'll also type e arrow get message so this will show our uh, error message and if you have a successful connection then uh, it will show connection successful we'll remove this line of code after testing our connection so let's save it and uh, let's refresh our page and it says connection successful so i'll just remove this from here now the first thing we'll do is uh, view our data so we'll go over here and create a new function public function we are creating a public function because we are going to call it from our index.php file so here we'll type view data We'll create a query variable and we'll store our query in here. We'll type select name from names. So this means that select the name column from the names table. Now we'll create a statement and we'll type this arrow con arrow prepare. And she will pass in our query so this is where we are preparing our query and then we have to execute our query so we'll type stmt arrow execute and we'll store our data inside a data variable and we'll type stmt arrow fetch all 
and we want it as an associative array so we'll type pdo colon colon fit underscore asoc and we'll return our data variable now what we'll do is call this method from our index.php file so we'll go to index.php and here we will create a variable called data and uh, we'll call our view data function so we'll type db arrow view data now we'll just display our data over here so we have to type var dump which will show us our associative array data so we'll just refresh our page so here we can see our data we have these names right here so now what we have to do is display those names as list items now that's very simple just go over here and uh, go into the php mode and we'll write a for each loop so we'll type for each data as we we'll just have an iterator so we'll type i over here and open our curly braces and close the php mode and we don't need these three different list items because we are fetching from the database so we'll just have one and inside here we'll go into php mode and here we'll type echo i which is the iterator square brackets the name of the field and uh, after that we will uh, close our uh, curly braces and we'll just remove this line of code from here so we'll save this and we'll refresh our page and here we can see all our names have been displayed in our uh, unordered list now we'll create a method for searching our data in the db.php file so we'll go over here and uh, we'll create a new function we'll type public function search data and uh, we'll pass a parameter over here and we are going to search for this term right here so we'll create our query select name from names where name like and uh, here we'll have a placeholder name so what you're doing over here is selecting the name column from the names table where name like this term over here so using like we can uh, search for different names so I'll just show you how to do that we'll create a statement variable just like we did earlier this arrow con arrow prepare query stmt execute and uh, here you have to set our placeholder so we'll type name arrow we want to display all the names which has this term right here so we can have anything before that and anything after that term so here we have to type the percent sign and then concatenate it with the name variable and then we'll have a percent sign over here as well so this means that anything can be before this search term or after this search term and we'll store our result inside the data variable st empty fetch all we'll fetch as an associative array and we'll return our data so for just testing it we will just go over here and we'll change this to search data and we'll pass in some value over here so if you type jo over here and if you refresh our page we can see that all the names with jo inside it gets displayed this can be capital or small it doesn't matter so now that we have written our function for search we'll go ahead and uh, change this to view data now in our index.php file we'll go ahead and uh, for the input box we will add one more attribute called on input and uh, this means that whenever we type something in uh, this uh, search box then uh, this code over here will be executed so we will so we'll call a function in javascript when this on input is triggered 
So we'll create a function in JavaScript called search and we'll pass the value of this input box. So we have to type this dot value and uh, we'll create our uh, JavaScript file. So we'll just include it here main.js Now we'll just test it by showing the value on our console. So type search name console.log name. So let's open our console. So here's our console. Now let's refresh our page. Now when we start typing something over here, we can see that it gets displayed on our console. So whatever we type gets displayed on our console so the function is being triggered so let's close this and uh, and let's go to our index.php file and uh, in our uh, main.js file we will create a function and we'll call that function in our search function so we'll type fetch search data and we'll pass in our name variable Now what we're going to do is we are going to send this name variable to a search.php file and then we're going to write the code for fetching our data from the database in the search.php file and then we're going to return that data from there and we'll display that data in our page. So you have to write fetch and uh, in the first parameter you have to write the name of the file. Now in the second parameter you have to add some options. So we'll type curly braces and in here we will type method. We'll set the method as post and body. We'll pass a new URL search parameter. So we will type new URL search params name equals and we'll concatenate with our name variable. Now after calling fetch you have to type dot then and uh, we'll get our result over here so in here we will create a function so we'll just create an arrow function which means that we can directly type uh, the parameter over here and uh, put an arrow and uh, here we will uh, write the code for our function so what we'll do is we'll convert the result into a text format and after that we'll show that in our console And we'll also catch any exception that we get. Now that we're done with our uh, fetch search data function, we'll go ahead and create our file called search.php. Here we'll go into PHP mode and uh, we'll store our name in a name variable. So we'll tap post because uh, we had used the post method in our fetch function and we'll echo name colon name now we'll just check whether we get this displayed on our console whenever we type something over here if you see this you can be sure that our search.php file is being called from our main.js file so we'll refresh our page and we'll open our console and we'll type something over here we can see that name colon j is displayed over here if you type something else we can see that every time we type something over here our uh, search.php file is being called from our uh, javascript file and we are also passing our uh, variable to this search.php file so now we'll go ahead and echo the actual search data so first of all we have to require our db.php file Now our db.php file is a class so we can create an object and uh, we have to call this search data method. So here we'll create a new instance of our class we'll just call it con new db. Now we can call our search data method on this con object. So we will store that data inside a data variable and uh, we will type equals con arrow search data 
and we'll pass in our name variable and we'll echo that over here so instead of echoing name equals this we will echo a json data so we'll type json encode and in parenthesis we will pass the data now we'll go to our main.js file and instead of text we'll change this to json now we'll just go ahead and refresh our page and we'll open the developer tools and we'll go to network and uh, if we type something over here and if we go over here to the search.php we can see that we are getting these three names with jo in it we'll type something else and if we go over here and click on this we can see we get two names with jo in it and if you just search for charles and we'll click over here we can see that we get this one name with charles in it and uh, if you remove everything we see that we get all the names so now we are sure that we are getting the response so we'll close our developer tools now we don't want to display that on our console so we will create a function called view search result and uh, we have passed our uh, json data over here so we'll just receive our uh, variable over here you can name these variables anything you want first of all we have to access uh, this uh, unordered list so if you go to index.php for our unordered list we have given an id of data viewer so we'll go to our main.js file and uh, we'll create a constant data viewer document dot get element by id data viewer now we'll set uh, the data viewer to blank now first of all we have to remove all the list items and then you have to display the list items from this data so here we'll type data viewer dot inner html equals blank and uh, we'll create a for loop for i equals 0 to less than data dot length i plus plus you can also use a for each loop all right so now we'll create a constant for the list item so we'll type const li equals document dot create element and we'll create a list item and li dot inner html equals data which is the data that we get from here this is the json data so we'll type i over here so we are looping from the zeroth item to the last item in the data so we'll type i so i goes from zero to the last data over here in our loop and uh, here we will type the column name now we'll type data viewer dot append child and here we'll pass our list item so what we are doing over here is that every time the loop is running we are creating a new list item and we are appending that list item to our ul over here so let's save this and refresh our page and uh, if you type something we can see that all the search results are being displayed we can see that everything is being searched live without refreshing our page so that is basically it with our uh, functionality now we'll just go ahead and uh, style this and i'll just fast forward it Thank you.
and that's basically it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and uh, if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day